Now hear me and hear me well. What they meant for evil, God will turn into your good. In the name of Jesus. Father, today, in this enough is enough service. Let there be an end to everything that needs to be ended for our joy to be full. Answer questions in the heart of your people. In Jesus' glorious name. Please put your beautiful hand together for Jesus. For Jesus. And you may please be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is your day. The same God that you have come to seek today will ensure that nothing good will stop in your life. The Bible said he giveth good things to them that walk uprightly. Every good thing you need for your joy to be full, I decree to be released to you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember this, our Thanksgiving service is also our enough, is enough service. You must have come with a list of the things you want to say enough is enough to. Please drop it on this floor. The power of God is here. People pick sand from here, go back to their places of work and careers and experience businesses, uh, breakthroughs, career breakthroughs. Now that that list is here, the same power at work will terminate whatever needs to be terminated in Jesus' name. Remember, in our Sunday services, we've been looking at understanding the unlimited power of faith. So today we're going to be looking at the concluding part, which is also part three. We'll be looking at part three A in this first service, understanding the unlimited power of faith. Please come with me to... First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 15. In this enough is enough service. Whatever need to be stopped must stop. Whatever need to come so that your joy will be full will come. First Chronicles 21, verse 15. If you are there, please let's read together one to go. First Chronicles 21, verse 15. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord behaved, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Onan, the Jebusite. We all know the background story here. Devil moved David to make a census of the soldiers, and there's nothing wrong with census, but the motive was wrong. Because he was thinking he was getting victory by the number of soldiers he had. And God was taken from his own place. You know, God will never share his glory with anyone. So God got angry with David. And um, God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But a time came, God said, it is enough. Now hear this. If an angel sent by God can be stopped, the, one, the demon sent by the devil can cheaply be stopped. Amen. God said, it is enough. Stay in your hand. I am sent to you this morning to say to certain issues in your life, it is enough. Stay in your hand. To that barrenness I speak this morning, it is enough. Stay in your hand. Did you hear the testimony of that brother that was reading to us this morning, sent from the mail? For 10 years, they have been barren. Not only barren, his own dogs were barren. That was wickedness from the devil. At least even dogs that used to burn every six months, now should burn. <laughs> but the devil said, nothing will be fruitful in this house. They relocated from Abuja, came to Kaduna here, Started worshiping here. Had the word of God stayed. Went through Wobi. Some of you that have not gone through Wobi, you are wasting your time. He encountered God by the word of faith. The wife encountered God. Began to demonstrate how she would take care of her children. Because God called those things that be not as if to say they were. And she conceived and brought forth a baby girl. Not only that, the 
German shepherd which he had been keeping that for eight years no conception conceived also. And he said, when God visits you, even your own animals will be fruitful. Now hear me. I don't know who barrenness has been denying their joy. I am here today to say enough is enough. Your own may not be barrenness. Maybe your own is delay, disappointment, marital swear. Maybe your own is sickness. Maybe your own is oppression. Maybe your own may be shame, indebtedness. I don't know what it may be. I may have mentioned it. I may not have mentioned it. But whatever has not been by God, warring against your destiny, I decree today, enough is enough. Stay your hand in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. Hear me, whatever been crying will not cry again. Why am I saying this? My scripture told me, Nahum chapter 1 verse 9, what do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an altar end. He said, affliction shall not rise up the second time. As a man of authority who can say to one go and they go and say to another come they come I decree affliction shall not rise up the second time Whatever sorrow you went through, that miscarriage you went through, will be the last forever. That shame will be the last forever. Wherever you are today will be the least place you will ever be in your life. Oh, my Bible told me, Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 15, that you shall not see evil anymore forever. Forever. So whatever you have seen you didn't like, that will be the last you will see your such in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. One woman once came here from Zaria. Nobody knew what she wanted, just like I normally do. So the first time I went to welcome them, prayed for them, shook hands with them. And this woman went back. For three years, the husband left her without any explanation. But when she got back to Zaria, within that same week, the husband came back with begging. Not only that, her business that was done began to blossom. She traveled all the way from Zaria to come here to share her testimony. That testimony was shared on this altar. Hear me. Every form of marital disharmony, I decree enough is enough. I command that family on settlement to be settled. That generational poverty to end. That oppression to end. That marital spread to end. That disappointment, that delay, that near source syndrome to end in the name of Jesus. One woman had an issue here. Since she was three years old, three good years, she was initiated by the place the mother took her to in, and was married to a spiritual husband. And she did everything within her power to be free. Married, the thing still kept disturbing her. But one day, in a service like this, nobody touched her. Nobody knew what she was carrying. But the power of God picked her inside the service. Started dealing with her. And that man left her. Since that day, she has been free. Not only free, her own children became, began to see the goodness of God by that a singular event. Now hear me. I don't know what you have carried here today that is not of God. I don't know how long it has been, but surely there is an end and thy expectation shall not cut off. I decree today will be the end of that satanic siege. <laughs> Jacob was tired of deception and being deceived. He was coming back and he knew that Esau was waiting to kill him. And he didn't want to face that kind of a thing. He went and was left alone. Genesis 32. From 24 to 30, he was left alone. Sometimes he needed to face God alone. He was left alone. And there wrestled with him. 
the angel of the Lord. I'm got so tired, the angel broke his tie. And he said, look, if you like break my leg, I will not let you go until you bless me because I need a blessing. Enough is enough of this kind of deception and being deceived. I want a change of story. And you know what happened? That day, the angel changed his name. He said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Your name, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Your name shall be called Israel. Because as a prince, you have prevailed with God and with man. And Jacob looked at that place and called the name of the place to near. And he said, I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Somebody is here today. You will encounter God face to face. And whatever be following you that you didn't like, you will drop them today. That name they've given you that you don't like. Oh, nobody called it. God didn't call Elizabeth barren, but life gave him barren. Elizabeth that was called barren. God didn't call her barren. When they bombed Bartimaeus, his name was not blind. Life gave him blind. But when he encountered Jesus, when they encountered Jesus, change came. Now hear me. By your encounter today, there's going to be a positive change of name. A positive change of status. In the name of Jesus. That is why I want to enjoy you that your faith should come alive today. Why? Faith is vital for quenching anything that the devil offers. Ephesians 6.16 Taking the shield of faith, we are which you shall be able to quench all, not some, all the fiery darts of the devil, including the one he's using to harass you. All the fiery darts of the devil. That epilepsy in your family is coming to an end. That snake speed in your endeavor is coming to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, what is this faith? Remember, as far as this kingdom is concerned. Faith is the key to everything. For if thou can believe, all things are possible to whosoever believeth. Mark 9, 23. And in this kingdom, it is to you according to your faith. So your, your faith determines the size of your blessing. Your faith determines what you go over. I normally tell us here, if you go to fetch water from the ocean, your container determines the quantity of water you go home with. If you go with teaspoon, if you may reach home with you, that's what you get. If you go with 20 liters, uh -huh. if you go with tanker, if you go with ocean liner, that is it. Your size of faith determines the size of your take-home blessing. Please let your faith come alive this morning. What is this faith? What is faith, number one? Faith is an asset of inestimable value. It is worth anything that one can ever desire in life. No matter what, any price you can pay to get this faith, get it. <laughs> it is an asset of inestimable value. It is worth anything that one can ever desire in life. Mark 9, 23. For if thou can believe, all things are possible to whosoever believeth. You know the background story there. That man brought his child to, G to the apostles to him when Jesus was not there. And they could not. Not that they would not. They could not. There are two different things. They could not. They would not means they will be willing. But they could not means they lack the ability to effect the change the man desired. And the man started insulting them. See all of you, you wear a coat and you say you are pastors. <laughs> eh? You can't cure this child. And Jesus was coming and he also went ahead to insult Jesus. Okay, they say you are their guy, eh? you are their boss. If you can do anything, because this your boys cannot do anything. If you can do anything, because I've seen your boys can't do, I doubt if you can. But if you can do anything, help us. Jesus said to him, it is not what I can do. Why? I can do all things. There's nothing that is made that's not made by him. It's not what I can do. It is what you can believe. For if thou can believe, all things are possible to whosoever believeth. So the ball is not in God's court. The ball is in your court. It is not God that will determine what should there be. Enough is enough. It is your faith that will determine what you should say. Enough is enough. It is not what God can do. He can do all things. It is what you can believe. 
Jesus said, if you can believe all things are possible, that's why the man immediately saw that the, the ball is in his own call. He said, Lord, I believe. Help that my unbelief. And immediately, Jesus cast out that spirit from the son. Now hear me and hear me well. Look at the testimony we have. On time testimony. I can stop this message from there. That woman had the word of God on faith. She decided to practice it. She carried her rapper, designed a child, started feeding the child. The husband said, this my wife is going mad. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, faith makes you, you may not look like it, but you will get it. <laughs> and to that same moment, she conceived. And today she has her baby in her hand, terminating 10 years of waiting. You know, that could have also happened 10 years ago if she operated the same way she operated. So God is not, you are not waiting for God. God is waiting for you. God is ever ready. There's a battery they used to call ever ready battery. I don't know how ready that battery is. God is the ever ready God. 24 hours, 247 is available. Any day your faith touches his power, your miracle is delivered to you. So what God can do tomorrow, he can do today. If your faith is ready today. Glory to God. It is an asset of inestimable value. One of us here had a teaching we met in the fruitful class. He wasn't around. There are people who were there practical. And we are laid on them. Anointed poured on them. But he never, he wasn't there. He only had the CD with the wife. And according to their testimony, none of the brothers, none of them has ever gotten a child. So he too was afraid. See, this thing may be my own portion. But when he had the teaching, faith came. Because faith came by hearing, hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. And he believed God for his own fruitfulness. And the wife conceived, brought forth the baby boy. They came back the second time. The wife conceived again, brought the baby girl. Now they have two. If they want more, they will still get more through the same process. An asset of inestimable value. You can't estimate the value of faith. Please let your faith come alive today. What is faith? Number two, faith is that force that invests the invisible world and delivers its mission with precision. It is that force that invests the invisible world. Faith can travel to the invisible world and deliver its mission with precision. Somebody said, I don't understand. Remember that this world is controlled from the spirit realm. Hebrews 11 makes us understand that. Hebrews 11, from 1 to 3. Now faith is the substance of things so forth, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, the elders obtain a good report. But we understand by true faith. That the whole world is framed by the word of God. But the things we do see are not made of the things that do appear. So the things you see today are made to come by certain forces you cannot see. There is the seen world and there is the unseen world. If you say you don't understand it, I give you this negative example. But it, you, it, because you may be real to you. In your village, somebody has come to boast. I will kill this man. I will show him. <laughs> And maybe make some enchantment or make some, 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 some charms and all that. And before you know it, the man dies. Have you seen something like that before? How did he? Without any physical contact. Okay. How do you receive call? How do you receive call? You call somebody from here to, in America. The person will answer you. No connection. Can't you see that something? Eh? Hey, okay. The same way faith can travel into the spirit world. Faith can travel into, I can stay here now. You have seen that before, many times. There's testimony. Some people have come here two times. I've seen one from Austria, one from UK. Uh, the, the, their children, one from Italy, Italy or so. Their children heard, and they say, hey, uh, you must deport you. I say, no, they must not deport them. They will give them paper, and they will give them paper. From here, from this place, I've not been there before. I stay here, I change it. <laughs> have you not had such testimonies here? Eh? Huh? So faith can invade the invisible world to, with precision and do what you want here. And do, the other old woman was one of her dignity. was crying to me, say, the sunny day, they want to deport him from UK. I said that he will not come back. And they, instead of deporting him, they gave him paper to stay. 
people go to interview here, I say, anybody you see there, they will not ask you a question you don't know. It will be a gist. They say, ah, do you eat indomie? Say, yes. So take your job. Is that how they get joy? If it's that, everybody should get it. <laughs> but there's a power that makes them, they won't know what to ask you. Sometimes they ask you, they will answer it by themselves. Because something has gone ahead of you. Now look at this example, scriptural example, Mark chapter 4, 36 to 39. Jesus entered a little ship, another little ship with him, which means escort. Jesus was having escort. Wasn't a poor man. And, you know, they were crossing to the other side because they told them in verse 35, let's go to the other side. And the Bible said a wind, a storm rose. And the storm was boisterous. The apostles got afraid. Carry no doubt that we perish. Jesus was at rest, sleeping in, with, with a pillow. Not with stone like Jacob, with pillow. He's a big man. Private cabin, that's what it means. <laughs> that time. Went. Now, the third man, he woke up. He said, what is it? Is it wind? Is it because of wind you will not allow me to rest? How about, why are you fearful? I beg. Wind, peace, be still. By the word he spoke, power went into the invisible to stop wind. They said, look, who is this man? Who is this man that even the winds obey him? Now, when you are prayed by faith, forces of nature obey you. Forces of nature obey you. So faith can travel into... When we say to people who are looking for the fruit, they will be fruitful, they are fruitful. We say prosper, they prosper. We say be healed, they be healed. We say go and, get, go and pass your jam. You, they go and pass. Don't write the exam two times. They don't, they don't write two times. How about? God is no respecter of person. In every nation, any man that fears God and walks in righteousness is acceptable to him. So you, the same way you can, by faith... When you mix the word of God with faith in your heart and you speak it with your mouth, it is like God himself speaking. And the same way God controls the whole universe, then you can control the things around you. So you can say to that pain in your body, enough is enough. And you will say, I won't come back again. You can say to that borrowing, enough is enough. You can say to that evil habit in your life, enough is enough. You can say to that oppression, enough is enough. You can say to that Generational poverty, enough is enough, and it will obey you. The same way the wind obey Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is in you if you are born again. Now hear me and hear me well. Every storm that has been raging against you, I command them, peace be still. Every sorrow that has been besieging you, I command them, peace be still. Oh, whatever enchantment, divination, satanic demons that have been sent against you, forces of oppression, forces of delay, spiritual caterers that have been feeding you with rubbish, bringing the misfortune, delay, disappointment, I decree such come to an end. <laughs> one of us came here one time from, from, from Kakuri. He came to complain to me that the husband is becoming useless. I said, what happened? He said he was doing well before. He even started the building in the village. But one uncle said he will never build. He will never become anything. And true, true, they kept reporting to them that this man will go to the graveyard and be making enchantment and be calling the husband name that he will never amount to anything. And practically, it was looking so. And she said, ah. I said, this kind of thing, man. Let's come outside. And I spoke to this art. I said, heaven reveal the iniquity of this man. Art be against him. You know, that's the worst prayer you can pray for a man. If this art is fighting somebody, anywhere you go. <laughs> you know, the short of the testimony is this. The man saw trailer coming. The same man that been enchanting against this uh, sister's husband saw trailer coming and carried himself and gave to trailer on high speed. That was how he was crushed. And crushing him was also crushing his enchantment. Mysteriously, this same man began to do well. To the extent he bought a car for the wife, bought so you machine, started building his house again in the village. It's not mere coincidence. 
Now hear me and hear me well. Any power that has been assigned against you, against your family, against your finances, against your career, against your business, against your joy, against your family. Strange men, strange women harassing your family. Occultic men with your occultic and enchantment and divination, witches and wizards, more with their monetary spirit. I decree today they be silent permanently. What is unique about this faith? What is unique about the Bible faith? Number one, faith unleashes its power through the tongue. If you don't know how to speak, <laughs> you are not ready to enjoy the rewards of faith. Faith unleashes its power through the tongue. Now hear me. The word of God is like the bullet. The word of God is what? Like the bullet. Your heart is like the loading chamber. When you load the word of God in your heart, pyam. So unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the gospel did not profit them because they didn't miss it with faith in them that had it. So when the word of God enters your heart and you miss it with faith, Hebrews 4, 2, and you release it with the trigger of the mouth. The mouth is a trigger. Are you getting me? When you load a gun, you cock it. And how do you release it? With the trigger. Pyam. And anything can happen. <laughs> So when you release it, the mouth is a trigger. So if you keep a closed mouth, you're, it's like carrying a gun without action. It's pump action, but there's no action coming from me because they're not hearing the trigger. Is somebody following me now? Now ask them in military circle. I'll have a general here now. Ask him when we finish. Now, when you, if you want to harass the enemy, bah, if you hear the gunshot of the enemy, boom, what do you do? Boom, boom. that the battle will know that you too you are ready or arm robber come to your house and you hear gunshot don't release your own boom boom they will turn they go to another place because they say this man is ready but you know sometimes when the devil do boom he say hey, pastor pastor pray on prayer oh, they don't come the devil will know this one is a victim so what you say matters what you say is a first aid treatment to whatever the devil says. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my strength, he is my God, in my fortress, my God in whom I trust. What are you saying? Some are not saying anything. All that saying is, oh God, I'm finished. You already lost the battle before the battle started. I am finished. Don't allow such to come from your mouth. You cannot be finished. How can you be finished? <laughs> he said, Pastor, the way it is now, he's bending me here, he's bending here, I am sick. Can't you see it on my face? I am sick. Look at what the Bible said. Maybe you are not reading your Bible. Isaiah 3, verse 24. He said, The inhabitants of the land shall not say, I am sick. It's not permitted to come from your mouth. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. He said, if I say I'm, I'm rich now, they will, they will kill me. You are not wiser than God. Hear me? The power of the Christian is in the mouth. Mark 11, 23. If you can say to this mountain, be that removed, be that cast into the sea, without doubting in your heart, he said, you will have whatsoever you say. So faith is released through the mouth. Luke 21 verse 15. He said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom that your enemy cannot gainsay nor resist. If you don't know how to open your mouth, you live a close life. Close destiny. But that will never be a portion in Jesus' mighty name. That will never be a portion in Jesus' mighty name. Faith, number two, Engraft humanity into divinity, thereby conferring dominion. Anytime you engage faith, faith brings you into the realm of God. In Romans 11, 19 to 24, we saw the mystery of grafting. How that we that we are once wide olives, we are grafted to become part of the main olive. In agricultural science, we are taught that. You can bring 
the stem of for instance an orange and put it and graft it to that of a lemon and this one will be producing orange this one will be producing lemon but they are all being fed from the same stem you may have seen that in elementary agriculture that is why by faith you are grafted into god to behave like god faith makes you to operate in the realm of god now hear this mark 9 23 if thou can believe all things are possible to whosoever believeth mark 10 27 with men it may be impossible but not with god for with god all things are possible so faith makes you to operate in the realm of god it brings you into the realm of divinity to have dominion and god is having dominion over the earth he rules it forever with his power may god give us understanding in the name of jesus christ in jesus glorious name Anyway, today is enough is enough service. So every affliction of long continuance is coming to an end in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy 28, verse 59, the Bible said, the plagues of long continuance, sicknesses of long continuance are all causes. So anything that has continued must end. Because the God of all grace, which we have, has called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus. And he said, after you have suffered a while, he will make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. First Peter 5.10. So, anything that is more than a while, anything that is more than a moment, is not permitted. It's not permitted. It's not permitted. God has redeemed us from the cause of the law through Jesus Christ, so that we can have the blessings of Abraham. So, if you are serving God, you are, you are separated from this issue of causes. Why? By serving God, the blessing of God comes upon you. And it's the blessing of God that makes causes to go on a reverse. Exodus 23, 25 to 26. Serve the Lord your God. He will bless your water and bless your bread. He will take away sickness from the midst of thee. He will not allow you to be barren or cast your young. The number of your days he will fulfill. Look at those blessings. Five loaded blessings for one word. Serve. If you serve him, God will bless you. And when God blesses you, no cause is permitted to remain. You know what Naman, uh, uh, Balaam told Balak? He said, I have a commandment to bless and I cannot do otherwise. I cannot cause who God has blessed. So when you serve God and God blesses you, no man, no devil can cause you. So if you enter a covenant to serve God, he puts an end to the crisis in your life. When they enter the covenant to serve God, in 2 Chronicles 15, 12, then 15, and then verse 19. When they entered the covenant to serve the Lord with all, to serve the Lord with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their strength, God was found of them. God gave them rest round about, and there was no more war. Wars are going on because people have not made up their mind to serve the Lord in truth and in spirit. Serving God guarantees rest round about. He puts an end to pressures of life. Job 36 verse 11. He says, "Serve the Lord your God. He will, if you serve and obey Him, He will." You spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures, not in pressures. Many are going through pressures because they are not serving the law. Like we are in the oppression, run right now. How many of us are running? Don't wait for any man. Run, 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 run. Serve the Lord. Go out there. Every week I set my target. I, I said this week, God, I want to have 100. And I, I broke it down every, every day. Let me at least 10. Some days 20. Yesterday, I got the balance. That's why collect those cars, put them in your pocket. If you have a target, if there is no goal post, there will be no, 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 no one to win. In any football field, if there is no goal post, how will you score? Collect it so that you will know what you are doing. Serve the law. This is what is on board now. Serve the law. With your time, if you, have, you are working all the week, going to work. You don't have even a single hour, a single day for God. Then something is going wrong. Because it is from him that all blessings flow to you. And when blessings come, causes are put on the reverse. Have you not heard Proverbs 11:11? 11, 11, By the blessing of the upright, a city shall be exalted. Until the blessing of God comes, the causes of life can remain. But hear me and hear me well. By the blessing of God today, I command every cause to be put on a reverse. Yeah. Therefore, pleasures in your life are turned to pleasures in the name of Jesus.
That pressure in your head, in your family, your finances, in your career, in your academies, I command you to come to an end in the name of Jesus. You shall not see evil anymore. Rise on your feet. Hallelujah. Rise on your feet right now. Glory to God. Now I want to give opportunity to some people here to give their life to Christ. Why? You cannot say enough is enough and get results if God, the Almighty, is not your backup. <laughs> I used to tell people, when you are going on the streets and you see a small boy tell you, stop there, I will deal with you now. And you know you can use your one hand and grab and finish it. person. <laughs> Wisdom demands, look around. There may be some people giving him boldness to do what he's doing. <laughs> Except God is with you, you won't be bold to say enough is enough. And God cannot be with you except Jesus Christ, the way leads you to him. For no one can come to the Father except through him. So you are here today. You have been suffering yourself for nothing. Align yourself with Jesus so that you can be bold to say to that issue, enough is enough. Now you want to give your life to Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Please put your hand on your chest right now. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus someday, but you are no more there. You can return to him, he will return to you. Also pray this prayer as you dedicate your life to him. Maybe as I'm talking right now, you are suffering from certain evil habits, and you know you can't even help yourself because you have made new resolutions and it never resolved. But now you can come to Jesus who has the power to break that yoke. You, why not turn to him today and pray this prayer of salvation? Put your hand on your chest, pray, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I believe in my heart you are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name now in the book of life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' glorious name. Lord, I want you to also pray on that list again and pray and communicate your desires, your heart desires to God. Father, I want so, so, so thing to end. I don't want to see this and this again in my life. Lift your voice. Ask. Even now, anything you ask of him, he will give to you. Lift your voice and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I say enough is enough to stagnation. I say enough is enough to moving around the circle. I say enough is enough to barrenness. I say enough is enough to hatred. I say enough is enough to every form of yoke, every form of sickness and pain. I say enough is enough to instant failures. Lord, help me. Near success syndrome be ended in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' glorious name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the name of Jesus, you that created the eyes, you can see. Whatever your children have written and desired an end to, let such end. Amen. Let every form of affliction be terminated. Amen. Let every form of pain and oppression be terminated. Amen. Let their hard desires be granted. Amen. Jesus said to everyone here, you said if they, after they suffer the why, you will establish them, you will perfect them, you will strengthen them, and you will say to them, Father, say to everyone hearing my voice right now, Amen. wherever they need settlement, let that settlement be effected. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.